Hi everyone, you're welcome to my professor note. Here in this video, you will get to know about the origin of stream of consciousness, the earlier writers, and the PYQPs we will also discuss towards the end of this video. All right, so we know that stream of consciousness is a flow of our thoughts. We already know that thing, but this uh, technique is used this is a narrative which is used in the novels or in the work of literature to articulate the thoughts and the feelings of that character. So we can know their inner side, that what do they think, their natural part, that what that character actually is like. So you cannot make a comparison between the internal monologue and the stream of consciousness because in internal monologue, you use the structural language. You are talking to yourself. Like there is a grammatical structure, but in a stream of consciousness, this is the flow of unconscious thought. Just anything is coming, just anything, right? So there we do not have that grammatical structure in the language. So this is how there is a difference between the internal monologue and the stream of consciousness. Alexander Bain was the first one to coin this term, but the credit is most of the time given to the William James. This uh, work of senses and the intellect came into 1855 and William James, who is credited with this term, the brother of the Henry James, American writer, very famously known for his uh, work called your The Portrait of a Lady. Isabella is the main character there. When this novel was published, you can let me know in the comment section below. William James is also known as the father of American psychology. You will also get this PDF in the Telegram channel. So you can also join us there. All right. We will also conduct the quizzes over there. So he used the stream of consciousness term in his work called the principles of the psychology. For the first time, this is where it was coined and it was published in the 1819. So what he was trying to tell you here that our thoughts are continuously running. It's like a flow, right? That never stops. And that's what your stream of consciousness is. And this is how it came into existence. But when it was used for the first time in the literature, who used for the first time this term in the literary context? That is Mary, that is your May Sinclair. In 1918, when she reviewed the Dorothy Richardson's uh, novel, The Pilgrimage. Pilgrimage is a part of the third novel, a series of 13 novel. The name of the series is The Pointed Roofs by the Dorothy Richardson. The first complete novel to use the stream of consciousness. Right? And in 1918, for the first time, uh, this uh, term was used in the literary context. And here we are discussing some of the writings. Uh, so your James Joyce is the first one we see in the or, uh, modern literature. The first one to use this term, Ulysses, published in the 1920, divided into the 18 lecture. We know that Leopold Bloom, your Bloom is the main character here. But the first three chapters are dedicated to the Stephen. Uh, your Stephen Dedalus, who is also the protagonist in the the portrait of the artist as a young man his earlier novel so this novel is influenced by the homer's odyssey odyssey the main character there is odysseus and here your main character is bloom so there is a comparison between these two characters right your penelope in the odysseus in your odyssey is the molly right and this journey to home is condensed within a one day this novel is set over the course of a single day. And the later novel, uh, which we will discuss here by the Virginia Woolf, is also influenced by this work. Uh, so he does not go home. He just keeps wandering out there because he knows that his wife, Molly, is engaged somebody else. And if he go there, he will be embarrassed. So to escape himself from that embarrassment, he's just wandering out there. Then we have another work by the Virginia Woolf. 
right? That is a Mrs. Dalloway, published in the 1925, influenced by the Ulysses. She read the Ulysses and she got influenced to use the stream of consciousness in her novel as well. Here we have a character called the Septimus Warren Smith. And we can find a connection between the Virginia Woolf and Septimus Warren Smith here. Septimus Warren Smith also having nightmares about the dead bodies, about the dead, because he's shell-shocked. You know, shell-shocked in the war when there's bombing and firing, you see all these death there. That has an impact on your mind that you just keep uh, having those images of that horror, right? In a similar way, the Virginia Woolf was disturbed by these deaths of her father, mother, and her brother, right? And uh, how Mrs. Uh, uh, Clarissa Dalloway felt happy when Septimus Warren Smith died that he got free from the miseries of life. This is something she's thinking and this is what your stream of consciousness is because in reality you cannot say those things to the family that is that a good thing has happened to your husband that he died, you know. But internally you know that thing. So it is. these are the unconscious thoughts just going through your mind. Right, and uh, here, this uh, when this day exactly was, you have to give me the dates of both of these. Uh, I think I told you earlier that it was uh, set on 16 June. You tell me the date, that when, which is the day here, in case of the uh, Mrs. Delaware, when this, uh, where, what is the date when this novel was set, that one particular day, when over the course of a single day, it was also uh, set this novel. So what is the date? Now here we have some questions from uh, stream of consciousness in your previous year's question papers. They were asked. So a stream of consciousness is derived from the writing of Mary, Mary Sinclair, your Dorothy Richardson, William James, Gertrude Stein, so it's obviously the William James is the first one who coined, who came up with this term, even though that is Alexander Bain, but he is not credited with this term. So obviously this answer is the C. Another question we have here, the term stream of consciousness was taken from the book, the human mind, the easy one, uh, another one we have here, the questions, okay, <laughs> questions, Fif arrange the following terms in the chronological order of emergence, that when, which term came first. So heresy of the paraphrase, we know the heresy, heresy is something when you go against the set rules, right, opposite of the those conventional set rules and paraphrase is to tell something the same meaning but in the different way to make it more clear heresy of paraphrase was uh, used by the cleanth brook in his work well wrought urn well wrought urn in uh, 1949 so obviously this one did not came first. Stream of Consciousness by William James in 1890, we know. Practical Criticism. It was by the I.A. Richards. Richards. And it was published in the 1929. This is where he gave this paragraph for the close reading to his students and they have to interpret that without telling them that which author have written that. This is how your new criticism came into existence. Defamiliarization. Uh, Victor Sklovsky. Sklovsky. Uh, it, this term was coined in the art as technique. Art as technique in 1917. Right. So now we can, I think, we put them into the chronological order. The B came first. Okay, you tell me this in the comment section. D came, then came your C, and then came your A. All right, so defamiliarization is about the power of a language that you can give even the ordinary or the familiar things 
a different touch you can uh, represent them in a, in a different way for example same same language we have but what makes it a prose or what makes it a poem we use the language in a different way and this is what the power of a language right so these were the three questions which were asked directly from the stream of consciousness i hope now it's a little bit clear for you in our next video i will try to bring in more mcqs because this is how, what my approach is i believe in solving the concept through mcqs so we also develop that that mindset to solve the questions and attempt them in a more better way in our examination so this is it for the day if you're preparing for your satnet gate examination so you can get access to the study material as well i have given the link and contacts below in the description box all right so you can also join us on all the social media platform as well if there's any doubt so you let me know till then time my professor notes signing off